ladies and gentlemen, um, we thank you all for being here very much. Every person that's here, we are grateful. And all those that are watching, we should probably, I don't often welcome them, and I should. Uh, if you're watching uh, on your computers, wherever you are, we're very happy to have you with us as well. Uh, we have uh, several announcements. Uh, first of all, the cantata is coming up next Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, up to 150 people are welcome to come. Uh, Jim and I are going to usher, so we're, we'll, uh, we'll bounce anybody over 150. We have to do that, but um, I think we'll just try to kindly uh, close the door. But um, just uh, if you're bringing friends, just ask them to please wear masks, and uh, we'll check that you're feeling okay at the door, and we won't uh, do temperatures and all that, but we'll just ask you. And uh, So uh, the choir's been working hard on this, and... You've heard some of the music. Uh, hearing it all together will be very uh, inspiring. Christmas Eve, I am looking for ushers for that because we need people to light candles uh, on people's uh, exit from the sanctuary. And uh, we, we, so we do need some ushers for Christmas Eve. If you uh, would like to do that, please let me know. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, and... We right now, are, we're in need of gift cards or money for gift cards. We have a record number of children we're helping. In fact, um, just uh, in the last day or two since these were actually printed, we have a couple more. So we have 85 um, children slash teenagers that we're getting gifts for uh, through by using gift cards. And so if you can help with that, uh, feel free to, those of you in the sanctuary, if you want to put an extra check in or something, just put joyful sharing or Christmas gifts or whatever it says on the memo line so we know what that is. Or if anybody wants to get cards and drop them off, um, let me know. We'll get them, and we'll get them to Barbara. Folks are working on giving out the uh, food baskets. I think we're up to 37 to 38 of those uh, on Saturday, so there won't be... Um, a lot of confusion here on Sunday, so I think things will be kind of straightened out. They're doing it Saturday morning, so it won't conflict at all with the cantata at 2 o'clock. I think that's, uh, let's see, Christmas Eve, we did that, we did that. Uh, okay, and the cookie walk. Good news, after church, lots of cookies are available. So uh, come early and eat often. Okay, uh, are there other announcements we should be making? Oh, it's, uh, wait a minute, we do have one here. We want to mention that it's uh, Heather's mom's birthday. So when you sing happy birthday, don't let me forget that. Okay. All right. Anybody else with announcements? Yes, Lydia. Uh, in regards to the food baskets, um, the food needs to be dropped off here Friday between 9 and 9.30 or Saturday morning between 8 and 9.30. If that's not convenient for you, contact Colleen at 325-325. 3091, and she can make arrangements for you to drop it off at her house, or somebody can meet you here at the church. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Louise. This is the last day to order flowers for the poinsettias uh, for church decorations. So the sign of Jesus is in the vestry. Please say it again. Hold on, we're reloading the microphone. I've never done this before. Hi. <laughs> uh, so this is the last Sunday, okay, to order flowers, poinsettias to decorate the church. Uh, the sign-up sheet is in the vestry. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I'm Santa Lynn, and I'm here with three things for you today. Number one. <laughs> Number one. There's a cookie walk in the other room, in the Dignard room, with lots of wonderful cookies. And I could eat them all, all by myself, but then that would be selfish, and that would not be a good thing to do. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Second thing, 
I need to tell you is I'm here with my bag and I'm looking for some help. I've got a bag of some really nice things here and we have a beautiful manger scene outside and need some help to get that all decorated. And so in my bag, I've got us some beautiful white lights and some beautiful garland. You could be Judy Garland, if you so choose. But I need some help to get it up there because I'm kind of busy with all my elves and stuff. So if you are able to help with that, Oh, I even got a timer for the lights. I just need the extension cord piece, but I figured we could get one around here somewhere. So I'd love some help with that. And then my third thing that I'm here to tell you, is Santa Lynn, is that in addition to the wonderful birthday that we have with Peg, with Peg we also have wonderful birthday here with Laura and with Marlena. Laura's birthday is today and Marlena's birthday is on Tuesday they're going to be 15. Ho, 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 ho. Thank you very much and I'll see you in a couple weeks. So I know we told you we were done announcing stewardship, but since we last spoke, we got quite a few more pledges and our numbers went up, and we wanted to share with all of you because we're very excited. So we now have 72 families pledging at a total of 94,556. So what we're gonna do is on the new year, January 2nd, we will give an update. We are accepting pledges through the end of the month, and we hope when we ring in the new year, Woody can ring his bell. So if any of you have not pledged, please do so. You can get the forms on the website. You can also talk to Lydia Peck, who is our treasurer, with any questions. We do have a couple of more announcements. Go ahead. Okay, well, I was gonna ask Craig to help me out with this, but Craig is very into free, and we're all about raising money here. So um, we have props, yeah. So we have some family friends up at Rossview Farm, and uh, they were fortunate enough to sell out of their cut your own Christmas trees uh, after just two weekends. However, they do have these beautiful wreaths, and um, you'll notice that there's winterberry in there, and that is forged from their farm, along with the white pine and cedar. And then um, Rebecca Ross makes the bows out of nine feet of ribbon, which I thought was pretty cool. Didn't know this much about wreaths before I started, but um, they have been very gracious in, um, in giving us 14 wreaths. Um, and the proceeds from selling the wreath, the large percentage of that goes to the church. So um, I have 14 wreaths in the back of my pickup truck that uh, is right at the end of the ramp. And um, we'd very much like you to take one, two, or 14 home. Oh, I'm sorry. They're thirty-five dollars a piece. And where yep. Where does the money go? The money goes. Uh, we had to pay for the wreaths, so they gave us a very good deal on that. But the large percentage of it goes to the church. Okay, so it's a fundraiser. It's a it's an impromptu fundraiser. Yes, because they they closed their stand. <laughs> a pop-up fundraiser. Ooh, that's a new thing. So hopefully we can help Woody get a little higher up the, uh, the bell tower by selling a few wreaths. Yep. Your turn again. And the last thing, as Woody said, is my mom's 75th birthday was Friday. She's up from New York, so our family has um, have flowers in honor of her. And Rob's birthday is Wednesday. So lots of birthdays. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I thought that money was going to your mom's birthday party, but no. That, that, okay. <laughs> That's terrific. And by the way, when you go to the cookie walk, you can't have any free coffee today, even though Craig gave us specific uh, instructions how to get coffee for free in the Dignard room, because they're holding off on coffee now till um, the beginning of the year, when hopefully COVID will um, be better. 
not in terms of higher rates, but lower. So, okay, any other announcements? So let me see if we got these birthdays straight. So it's Rob's birthday, his mother-in-law's birthday. What, what is mom's first name? Peg. Peg? Yeah. Okay, Peg. Is that Peg back there? Hi, Peg. <laughs> you're 75? Yes, sir. Wow, you look like you're about uh, 35, so okay. <laughs> Uh, that's great. So, uh, okay, Marlena and Laura. Is that, is that all the birthdays? Almost everybody here is having a birthday. All right. Let's sing happy birthday. Is that Keith back there running the equipment today? So if Paul can sing, that's wonderful. Thank you, Keith. All right. Again, remember, if you'd like to usher on Christmas Eve, or even if you wouldn't like to usher but, but would be willing to, let me know. Okay. We start the service with our morning prelude. We counted to worship the one who was being born again into our midst, who hope brings with him the hopes of human beings and of God himself, and lives a life of love and teaches us to be peacemakers. And let us begin to worship as we sing our opening hymn. It's number 259. We'll do verses 1, 2, and 5. Listen, reading is number 742. And let us read together. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. as he wrote an affirmation of faith around uh, the announcement side of our bulletins. Let us read together. Jesus, the Jew from Nazareth, is a living expression of the inexpressible God. He is the Christ, Son of Man, according to the Scriptures. He is present to the work the way meaning is present in the Word. Just as Word points not to itself, but to its meaning, so Jesus Christ, Son of God, points to one whom he calls Father. In that way, as one of us, he is the Word of God, whose meaning becomes clear. The unknowable one, therefore, can be known. Because God is not an enemy, but a friend, we need not be afraid. Because God completes what God begins, death is not the end, but a beginning holy undefined. Because God is faithful, creation has a purpose, and its name is history. Imitators of Jesus Christ, we want mainly to be kind and true, taking heart from our dear companions on the way. And we say with those who go before and who come after, amen. So may it be.
Very, very nice. A little preview. Uh, don't forget, tell your friends. Uh, come down to the uh, cantata on Saturday. It'll also be, uh, if you have friends that are afraid to come into the church, uh, either that we're going to take an offering or because of COVID, um, you tell them that um, the service will be available on the, um, on the uh, internet, um, uh, Facebook Live, and later posted on the website. So, Well, our scripture reading comes from Luke, the first seven verses of the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. That was to pay your taxes, by the way. I might just add that in here. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And here ends our reading. Well, before the children's sermon, please take a moment. Um, you can uh, fist bump, uh, wave to people, or whatever you'd like to do. Say hello to everyone as best you can. <clears throat> the, um, the candle we're going to light uh, is the candle of peace. Uh, we've done hope. Last week we did love. Today is peace. Next week is joy. Those sometimes get switched around um, simply because of my confusion, nobody else's. But uh, that's what we're going to do today. But I thought I would just, before we light the candle of peace, let's talk about somebody who was a peacemaker, did something good in the midst of a difficult situation, but never gets any credit. In fact, if anything, this, this fellow seems to get criticized. The innkeeper. The innkeeper. Everybody says, "Ah, oh, what a bum. He wouldn't even give um, the mother of uh, the Son of God a room so she could have a baby. Well, he didn't have any rooms. People were coming to pay their taxes. They had to be signed up. The Roman Empire declared this. And they came and the, all the hotel rooms were taken. All the inn rooms were taken. He could have just said, he just could put a sign on the door and said, um, you know, no rooms available, don't bother us. People that worked for him were busy taking care of the visitors, making sure they had, you know, the, um, they knew there was a, a free breakfast in the morning and all those things in the lobby and keeping the place clean and, you know, getting messages and all the kinds of things that innkeepers do. But his heart was moved by this pregnant lady and her Actually, it wasn't her husband yet, um, but her uh, male companion, obviously the father of the child, who were begging for a place to be where she could deliver a baby. And so he did what he could. He said, here, I I'm sorry I don't have any rooms, but you can go out in the stable with the animals. It'll be warm, warmer than being outside. You'll have some privacy and... If the baby comes tonight, well, I'll have a place to be born. Sometimes I think that we all have to be um, the important ones and, and do everything. We can't do everything. Um, and for the children, a lot of times we talk about these great things, you know, uh, that we Christians are supposed to do. And you think, boy, I, I can't lead the world. I can't bring the world into a more peaceful place. Well, neither can us adults that are here either. But we can do what we can do. You do what you can. And that innkeeper, I'm assuming it was a he, I don't know, but he or she did what they could. And they did something good. And that's what all of us uh, can try to do. So let's uh, light some candles here. Candle of hope, 
candle of love. Candle of peace. Next week we'll do the candle of joy as long as I get it straight. And let us sing our second hymn, which is Old Little Town of Bethlehem, number 250. I think we've mentioned that the, uh, the cantata is uh, going to be the one that the choir participated in in Carnegie Hall. And that was, a, just think about that trip the other, it was a wonderful trip. And um, my wife, who's good at researching these kinds of things, have found a nice, very simple hotel, but it was in a nice section of New York City. One of the better sections of the city is over on the Upper West Side. And um, it was really a, um, a very nice place, and uh, some of our um, choir members uh, told me that um, they had uh, gone into a very nice uh, restaurant that had a little bar connected with it, and, um, but a very strange thing happened there, so I will just share that story with you. Uh, uh, you never know what you're going to see in New York City. I mean, you just never know. Into the bar and walking into the restaurant and walking up to the bar came a carton of yogurt. Now, this is the Upper West Side. They're a little snobby up there. And the bartender says, get out of here, yogurt. We don't serve your kind here. Yogurt's reply, why not? I'm a cultured individual. So, <laughs> how many of you were there at that? Any of you? <laughs> a couple brave souls actually were in that bar then. Well, as we continue in this Advent season, uh, we, have, we have just lighted the candle of peace. 
And that's one of the titles attached to the coming Messiah by the prophet Isaiah, of course, uh, who said this new Messiah, this Messiah, not new Messiah, this, this baby that was to be born many years after Isaiah uh, will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of peace there shall be no end, um, it goes on to say. Now, uh, Jesus was also called uh, God's Word. That's in the Gospel, of course, of John, uh, where the, there's no Christmas story, but there's a more theological uh, definition of who this child was, uh, the Word of God. Uh, and yet, I think to be honest here, we have to say that Jesus himself one time said, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Remember that saying? Now, you wonder, how does that coincide with the idea of Jesus as the Prince of Peace? Well, Jesus never took up a sword. I think what he meant was, people are going to disagree, even within families, about who I am. Um, and uh, that is, I think, what he was referring to, uh, that he hadn't come to bring a literal sword, but conflict sometimes between even members of families to be divided on who this baby is. Um, it wasn't there to bring a war, uh, but the argument that still resounds about who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. We even have disagreements within the Christian family, uh, the church, which has many parts to it, on what it means uh, to follow Jesus. Now, on a bigger scale, even than just the church, we Christians, of course, believe that he was the Messiah that the Jewish people of the time were waiting for. Our Jewish brothers and sisters, who are our friends and brothers and sisters in faith, but they don't, they don't believe Jesus was the Messiah who was being waited for, and they're still waiting. Yet, I think we can agree that Jesus' teachings um, and actions were those of a pacifist, interestingly enough, a pacifist. Um, the Sermon on the Mount, you know, somebody strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. That's certainly a pacifist statement. Um, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is arrested, remember Peter takes out a sword and he whacks off the ear of the slave of the high priest? And Jesus says, Peter, put away your sword. Those who live by the sword, die by the sword. And then he um, attaches the ear back um, with some fast first aid uh, on the slave of the chief priests. And then Jesus' words from the cross. Does he call out his followers to rebel against Rome? Who are, these are the people that are crucifying them, the Romans, not the Jews. They often get the blame, but they didn't crucify Jesus. The Romans did. No. His first words from the cross are, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Jesus calls us as his followers to be peacemakers. And uh, this week, I think, has given us the occasion to think about real people, uh, one of whom was a gentleman who grew up in this town, another one, um, a gentleman that uh, served our country with valor in many regards and passed away this week. But I think these are two, two people who are just that, peacemakers. The first one, our local gentleman here, was Bo Strong, whose funeral I was honored to do on Friday evening over at French and Rising. Now, this is a man who, after four years in the Air Force, came back to his hometown, New Boston, and served this town incredibly uh, for 43 years in official capacities and long after that, till he passed away, um, uh, right around Thanksgiving at the age of 91. Um, he, talk about a volunteer, none of these, as far as I know, were paid positions. He, he was a volunteer in the fire department, a fire warden, uh, served on the board of selectmen, including as its chairperson, um, was on the planning board, uh, served on the South, uh, Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission, and most importantly, he was a friend and neighbor to all of us who have been privileged to live in this town. And uh, in doing a little research, um, 
about him, Nancy, his, his wonderful wife, um, gave me an article from the old New Boston Bulletin. And I read this at the funeral, not the whole article, but I'm going to read you what I read at the funeral. Um, I think it's very instructive, especially in this time. I think he could do us, he's doing us another public service as we remember him um, by listening uh, to what was said about him. This is, a, this is the New Boston Bulletin, which was the predecessor to the Beacon. And uh, in an article written about him, I guess he was retiring at the last town meeting as the chairman of the board of selectmen. And uh, so at that last, this is the last time we had a town meeting, April uh, uh, issue, so I guess the town meeting I think was in March, 1999. Now our, they call it a town meeting, but it's not a town meeting, it's an election um, in the spring. But it used to be the whole town came together on a Saturday. Um, my favorite, favorite part was always when they discussed the library budget. And some gentleman would raise his hand, same fellow every year, he'd get up and he said, Here's what he said, same thing over here. Ain't never been to the library, don't plan to ever go. And then he sat down. It was, um, you could look at your watch, say, well, about another hour and a half, we'll be none. So, he, um, uh, but anyway, at this town meeting, they honored Bo and Brandy Mitroff, who was the publisher of the New Boston Bulletin, wrote these words in an article about him. <clears throat> Through 43 years of public service to New Boston, uh, no, the, the title of the article is What's Best for the Town. Through 43 years of public service to New Boston, Bo Strong was led by that question in every decision. And then the article begins. Blessed are the peacemakers. Harold Bo Strong is a peacemaker, a rare breed of man who puts others before himself, approaches decisions without ego, and genuinely cares for his native New Boston as well as each of its residents. Although he finally recalls a past that was quite different than what he describes as today's hurry up world, he is equally comfortable with the changes that have, gone, have come to his hometown over the past six decades. Quiet and unassuming, but with a good sense of humor, he treasures relationships with people with whom he can have an honest disagreement and still remain friends. Being around Bo makes you want to be a better person and to learn all you can from his ageless wisdom. He's a simple man, seemingly devoid of selfishness. The entire focus of his adult life has been on others and what he can do to make their lives better or easier. And then at the, um, at the end of the article, uh, Brandy ends with these words. Um, Lee Nyquist, by the way, was the, uh, this might have been the first year that Lee was a moderator, I'm not sure, but he's still our moderator. Um, in making the official presentation to Bo Strong at town meeting, moderator Lee Nyquist read a Mark Twain quote that sums up this dedicated public servant perfectly. Always do right. It will gratify some people and astonish the rest. Then this paragraph, Bo smiles quietly reflective of his lifetime of service to New Boston. I always tried to do what I felt was right for the town in making a decision, he says. Even if it went against someone I knew, even if it was a friend, if it was in the best interest of the town, that's the way we should go. That's pretty good, pretty good advice from a very good man. It was an honor to do his service. Now, the second man is the only Republican I ever voted for for president. I mentioned this at Charlie Dankhouse's funeral because the only Democrat he ever voted for uh, in a presidential election was George McGovern, which I appreciated. So, uh, but Bob Dole was honored this week. Um, he was an incredible gentleman. Um, I think I met him, I think it was late 1995. I spent an hour with Bob Dole in, in our car. Uh, because I was doing interviews at that time for Nashua Magazine, and he was getting ready to run uh, for the Republican nomination for president, was up here. And I called to see if I could get an interview with him, and they told me I could if I, if I did them a favor. I said, what is that? Well, they wanted me to pick him up at the Union Leader Building, out in North, uh, the industrial uh, section out there in northeast Manchester, and to drive him up to Concord where he's going to address the state legislature. So I said, sure, I'd be glad to do that. 
Um, so I went and I, I picked him up. Now, this is a very partisan Republican conservative. Bob Dole was made no bounce, bones about the fact he was a conservative. He could be very caustic at times in his remarks uh, and was very partisan. Uh, but I, uh, I really enjoyed talking to him. First of all, did anybody here ever meet Bob Dole or shake his hand? He, I'll just tell you this about him, one of the first, Candy did. Uh, one of the first, was that the same time about the, she told me a story about Ted Williams. Was that the same place that Ted Williams was speaking? I don't, Bob Dole, no, it wasn't, okay. Anyway, Bob Dole always carried a pen in his right hand um, to save both himself and anyone that met him, embarrassment, because usually politicians shake hands. He couldn't use his right arm. Uh, he underwent eight surgeries um, after being wounded in a battle in Italy during World War II. So he couldn't use his right arm. So he held a pen there, so people would, sh would then uh, not put out their right hand, but their left hand, which he would put out to shake hands with you. Um, uh, it was... Um, an interesting moment. So he came and got in the car at the Union Leader Building, and I introduced myself and, and uh, shook hands with him. And uh, I said, well, Senator, I said, the uh, Union Leader uh, is at a different place than it was the last time you were up here. Because he, of course, had run for vice president um, in an election. I guess that was with uh, Gerald Ford. And, um, and he'd been up here be many times speaking. And he said, yeah, but they don't like me any better. And the Union Leader never liked Bob Dole. Bill, Bill Loeb hated Bob, though. I don't know why. I said, why is that? I asked him. He said, you know, I, I guess I'm not tough enough for him. I said, well, you're not tough enough for him? You gave your right arm for the country. Uh, all Bill uh, Loeb ever used his right hand for was writing scathing front page editorials. He said, I know, but they, they just don't um, like me. But he did me a great favor besides giving me an interview which I enjoyed very much. Um, we got up to the, um, to the state capitol. I pulled in front right on Main Street there, and um, he was just getting out of the car. Now, a Barbie had an aunt and uncle, uh, Uncle Bill and Aunt Barbara. And Aunt Barbara, I don't think, was ever uh, my biggest fan. But Uncle Bill was a state rep, a Republican, and um, she had come to, with him to hear Bob Dole speak, and they were out on the sidewalk when she saw me driving him up there. She jumped, ran up to the car. Woody, how wonderful to see you. It was the best greeting I ever got. <laughs> now, Bob Dole also had an incredible sense of humor. I, um, he one time uh, worked for Comedy Central, uh, the, uh, the cable TV station, and covered the convention, I don't remember what year this was, he covered the Democratic and Republican conventions and he was the in-house comedian. He'd make comments on it. Well, my favorite Bob Dole story is this one, which I will share with you. C-SPAN, I think, uh, had just about, it just kind of really was early in its inception in 1996 when he was the nominee for the Republican Party. And he was campaigning in California on, he was gonna give an afternoon speech on a flatbed truck as they often do. That's a good stage to, for political events. And um, somebody had wanted to make the stage a little bigger, so they put a board out at the end past the podium, but they didn't support it underneath. So um, here he goes on C-SPAN, no news announcers, just you see D Bob Dole going out to give a speech. And in the middle of the speech, he gets kind of enthused, so he takes the microphone and he walks out to the tip of the um, stage, but it, what he didn't know was this board was not supported underneath by anything. It might have been actually put there by a Democrat. I don't know. But so, ba-boom, you know, from about four or five feet up in the air, Senator Dole, who was then in his 70s, I think, uh, fell to the, to the cement. So the crowd gasped, that's there. No comment from C-SPAN, because they don't have announcers there. So he gets up, brushes himself off, comes up to the uh, back, uh, up to the uh, podium, and he says, you know, an interesting, uh, he says, I'm okay, I'm okay. He says, but an interesting thing happened. He says, I was just, had started falling to the ground when my cell phone rang. He says, I didn't know much about these cell phones, but I have one, and I, I answered it when I got back to my feet, and, and I said, hello, and the fellow says, hello, Senator Dole, I'm, a, I'm an attorney in Pennsylvania. I'm watching this, and I think you have a case. Uh, 
had a great sense of humor. Um, the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. Um, was, was really the impetus and the fundraising for that was done by two men, uh, Bob Dole and Tom Hanks, who had played um, a lead in the movie uh, Saving Private Ryan about World War II, and they worked together. And then once it was built and dedicated, uh, Senator Dole, on, uh, after he was retired, every Saturday morning when he was still able to do this, used to come down uh, and welcome veterans who were brought there um, to the memorial and thank them for their service to the country. Um, so I'm going to share with you, uh, if I can find it here, a, um, a column that appeared in the USA Today this week written by Senator Dole. It's the last op-ed column he worked on. He turned it in November 23rd. I'm not gonna read you the whole column, but if you would like to read the whole column, I've made some copies. There's some on the table in the back, and there's some on the table out here in the vestry. So feel free to take one afterward. Uh, but I'm just gonna read you a couple sections. Um, we all talked about his marvelous uh, and dedicated service uh, during World War II. He says in this column, it's called Dole's Final Column and entitled, Too Many of Us Have Sacrificed Too Much. In the U.S. Army, I submitted to the temporary regimentation required to ensure an Allied victory. It didn't erode my self-reliant values, but it did reinforce my belief in teamwork. And that is why teamwork is needed in Washington now more than ever. During my years in Congress, Democrats and Republicans were political combatants, but we were also friends. I learned that it is difficult to get anything done unless you can compromise, not your principles, but your willingness to see the other side. Those who suggest that compromise is a sign of weakness misunderstand the fundamental strength of our democracy. Then I, I particularly like th this, you'll see why when I read these words. Um, Finally, nothing in public life gave me more satisfaction than teaming up with my Democratic colleague, Senator George McGovern, to combat hunger in this country and abroad. We set aside past political battles because putting food on the table is the least partisan act imaginable. Today, I am proud to say that uh, our work lives on with the uh, USDA's McGovern Dole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program. This initiative supports educational efforts to some of the most impoverished areas around the globe while also fostering child development and food security in low-income food deficit countries. And then here's um, how he ended his last column. Uh, kind of his lasting words for all of us, I think. None of this is easy, any more than finding a definition of freedom with which 330 million Americans can agree. This much we know. Too many of us have sacrificed too much in defending that freedom from foreign adversaries to allow our democracy to crumble under a state of infighting that grows more unacceptable by the day. Take it from Dwight Eisenhower and the dwindling band of brothers who fought under his command. Quote, together we must learn how to compose differences, not with arms, but with intellect and decent purposes, unquote. And then the final words of Senator Dole to all of us. And take it from me, our history is rich with political debate and deep divisions, but collectively, we share a common purpose for a better America. We cannot let political differences stand in the way of that common good. Interesting words that appeared in the week that we honored Senator Dole, and sometimes history has marvelous coincidences. It's the week that we also remember the 80th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. May God grant us the insight to follow in the footsteps of Bo Strong and Bob Dole and to try to come and do what we can to come together uh, for the common good during this Advent season 
and in the year ahead. And thank you very much for listening, and thanks to those gentlemen for letting me quote them. And also thanks for Senator Dole uh, by making me more of a favorite uh, nephew-in-law for Aunt Barbara. <laughs> so let us bow together in prayer. Gracious God, we live in a time of harsh differences and many harsh words that we utter about one another. And yet we realize that Jesus came to teach us to work together, to love each other, to forgive each other, to come together for the common good of humanity, uh, to feed the hungry, to give hope to the hopeless, to give strength to the weak, and to create a human community of love, which Jesus called the kingdom of God. Uh, we thank you for Harold Bowstrong. We thank you for Senator Robert Dole and for so many others who have inspired us with that vision. Some religious people, others not, but all who sense the essence of the kingdom of God, which is to love one another um, as you would have us love you. And so be with us and help us and be with us as we celebrate the birth of your son Jesus and let us look at a new year coming as an opportunity to repair much of the damage that has been done by this pandemic and to repair our relationships with one another in this town and throughout the world. We offer our prayer in the name of that baby of Bethlehem who taught us to pray together and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> to worship as we share our morning gifts.
Gracious God, we ask you bless these our gifts and bless us to do your work here on earth. We ask in Jesus' name for your help. Amen. And our closing uh, carol is number 400, or no, make that 265. We're going to do verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Bless us and keep us and make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us and grant us peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No.